So this video is to help you with adding on the embroidery onto Morris the Bird. And I really do think that this is um, one of my favourite makes of the last few months. So um, it's inspired by William Morris's textiles and the birds represented in those. Um, it's been... I designed it alongside our summer issue of our Toff Quarterly, which was all inspired by tiles. And so I've really gone for lots and lots of embroidered stitches to represent almost um, the stitches of the textile, the woven textile, but also of mosaic kind of um, ceramics. So what you're going to do is once you've crocheted what is actually a very simple bird, you're going to add all this detail on with stitches afterwards. So this is um, the wing for this side. The both wings are the same. So just before um, you start, just a little tip is to curve that around like that to hide those row ends. So um, if you were going to be doing the other one, you'd curve it that way. So your row ends, um, your colour change jog is at the back. And again, if I'm doing the one that I'm going to do there, you just curve it over like that so that your colour changes are hidden when you're going to be sewing that into position. And I would recommend um, doing the embroidery on the wings first before you sew them on. It will just make it a little bit easier. So initially, we're going to start from the bottom in the lime section and we're going to be working in sapphire. And we're going to sew... Um, long stitches and short stitches. So long stitches are over three rows, short stitches are over two rows when we get up here. Um, but we're gonna start with long stitches to begin with. So let's start with our center bottom wing first. Now, there are a couple of ways of, of sewing these loops. I'm gonna give you both options. They both look very similar, so it's really on what you prefer doing. So um, what you can do, is a very basic method in the same way that we would normally sew eyes over, where you go up three rounds like that, and you just do two wraps. So one and two to create a long stitch. Now I'm gonna go up two rounds over here to start this next one. So two rounds up to do this next one, like that. The alternative way to do them is actually to um, bring in your yarn in a slightly different way. So you would need to come into where your stitch is at the bottom like that. Then you put your hook three rounds up. Sorry, not your hook, your sewing up needle. And um, three rounds through like that. Then you wrap around with that yarn. And then you just tack that in over the top. So I'll do the one on the other side using that method as well so you can see it. like that. So what you would do is come across to the point at the bottom of your stitch. You'd put your needle up through like that to the end of your stitch, wrap it around your needle, pull it through and then tack the top. And I actually prefer this method because it leaves them slightly more open, um, which I think is a really nice effect. It leaves them slightly bigger than just doing the two wraps. But do whatever is easiest for you. The actual final effect will be very, very similar. So once you've done that, I'm going to move on to one that sits in between. So onto this next one here. And you see how you use your picture in your pattern. It's one um, row down from your lime colour change like that. And this is another big one. So we're going over three rows. So one lime row and two of the teal ones. So wrap that round, go over the top and tack that into place. And then we've got one that side of that next stitch as well. So come across on there. So go up, wrap around. Sorry, I've come one round up there because it is actually on my colour change. So I'm going to come one over, which will just neaten that up when I do that edging one. Like that. And then in between the two. And I'm coming one stitch down from those ones. One, two, three. So up to that one there. Then across again and back down to the bottom. One, two three so then i've got i've done these stitches here and i've done these two in between i've got this last row to go in the sapphire before i'm swapping back to doing um to doing some in cream so i'm going to line this line up with the ones that sit beneath one two three up like that 
onto this side to do this one. One, two, three, around like that. And then my final one on this side, which you can only just see, it's actually probably gonna be on the back of the wing when I sew it in, but I'm gonna put it in place anyway. One, two, three up around and in. So that's my sapphire ones in, like that. Right, so onto my cream stitches. And I'm actually going to do sh two rows of short stitches in between for that transition. So cut yourself off a length of cream. And the short stitches are just around two rounds. And the first ones are going to go in between these um, sapphire ones here and one row down from where those ones end. So I'm going to put this one in position first. So I'm going to come in down here and up into that stitch there from where I will begin. Like that. So in two rounds, wrap it around and through. And one in between these two. I actually find it very relaxing. I'm not someone that has ever been an embroiderer, though I fear that's about to change um, because I have very much been enjoying doing stitches like this on work recently. Um, so then I'm going to put one in over here. And I've actually just gone one round too high there. So I'm going to bring that down so I know I'm on the same round. Use your rounds as a grid. You've obviously got them um, built in there, those um, straight lines. So do use those as your reference point when you're doing it. So I'm going to go in and around that one. Then I've actually got um, a row in between there. So there's a bit of a gap. So I'm going to leave that one untouched. And I'll be going up to put these next ones. Actually, what... <laughs> one stitch over from the ones that we were before. So I'm going to come up here, leave that round untouched. And I'm now still on small ones. So I'm still on small stitches that are only two stitches high. I'm just going to snip that sapphire one off because it wants to tangle itself up all the time. That'll make your life easier if you cut your ends off as you go along. So um, on this row, I'm going to be trying to get five in. So I've got one in so far. So over onto here. Two. Three. And now we're going to do some long ones again. And actually, we're going to do the ones that I think are most effective, which are the ones that go across the colour change. So on this next round of long stitches, so we're going to go back to doing threes. I've got them bang smack in between the ones that we've just put in. So I'm going to come up here to begin with. And we're doing threes. And that'll take us one, two and three just up into our cream like that. So wrap that over. And tuck that in. So in between these ones, like that. Wrap that over. Up into our cream, because we're going three rounds up. And in. Then come back down in between those two. Three rounds up, like that. Now I've done this video, so obviously if you want to, you can copy exactly step by step to make it identical to mine. But really it's about um, just putting these longer stitches of detail onto the work. You don't have to go for the exact numbers or the exact um, positioning that I've gone for. Should you not wish to, you will get a very similar effect um, without having to go as exact as this if you don't enjoy this kind of precise following of um, placement. So go in like that. So I've got my long cream ones in and that's me finished on my cream. So I'm just going to finish that end off. And again, I'm going to snap it off. 
Now, just a little tip, because I can, looking back at my work, I can see here that I've forgotten to loop the top of that one. If you end up with that, like I have done, all you need to do is come back down here like that. So come through, bring your needle through like that, grab it like that, and then firm that one in. I must have just missed it when I was going through. That one is the same. Again, I can't emphasize that this technique was quite new to me as well. So that's a nice way of fixing them if you do find that you just miss tacking that top there like I did. So those ones are in. So my final ones are my teal. And again, we're going to be crossing the color change lines here, which is what I think really breaks up um, those lines. So with your teal, last one's in. So we're going back to doing um, short stitches. So our teal, these are all two stitch ones that we're going to be putting on at the end. And we're putting them in between our cream ones so we're going to come up here like that into the middle two up around and tap that into place down onto the next one two up around onto the next one two up There we go. So that's those ones in. And then the last ones I'm going to go in between again. So I'd go from here in between like that. And go up two rounds around and through. So back down in between those stitches on the row below. So there we go. That is start to finish how you would embroider those stitches onto the wing of Morris the bird. And that's to make it exactly the same um, as the way that I have done with a combination of those three round stitches and those um, two round stitches, the long stitches or the short stitches across those different colours. So there, that's finished. You could put a couple more on the end if you wanted to. Um, before you sew those into place. So you could go for one here if you wanted to and one on the inside there, um, but you won't really see those once you sew those into position. So the last thing really is to talk you through the rest of the bird. So you see here on the top of the head, I've done exactly the same thing using those short stitches in lines. So my advice would be to do this central one first that runs up the back of the head and then work outwards from that central one like that to put those in place. On this lovely tail, you're doing exactly the same thing, um, exactly the same technique, but you're angling them. So um, they're long ones because they're going across three rounds um, and you're just going to angle them to a central point to give you those lovely arrows on the back of that tail. I really hope you enjoy making him as much as I've done. Like, I'm really proud of this design. Um, I love um, the work of William Morris anyway. I think it's a thing that um, a lot of us are very familiar with. So this is a chance for you to take your crochet skills and kind of um, show um, an homage really to another textile.